Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. One of two suspects that shot at a Balcones Heights police officer earlier this week is now in custody, but he didn't go in silently. What Sheriff Salazar has to say about the other man still on the run, the details just ahead on GMSA. Plus, an overnight shooting sends two men to the hospital. What police say they know about the incident at this time. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 50 degrees to start your weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast. Good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Saturday, February 6th. Thank you so much for starting your day, your morning, and your weekend with us. I haven't even seen Sarah Kosi yet this Hi. morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. You know, yesterday's weather, Max, um, it was gloomy. So mm. I slept most of the day, did some artwork. Artwork? Didn't really get outside much, you know. And, and Sarah, is the sun going to come out? Yeah, we are actually going to see the sun today. Unlike yesterday, we will finally see some sunshine in the afternoon. Uh, we are going to start off cloudy, though. And as you can see outside right now, it is uh, just a touch chilly. We've got 45 degrees at Bernie Stage Airfield, 50 at the airport, 51 in New Braunfels, 47 in Bandera, and 48 in Comfort. So if you head outside early this morning, you won't notice much of a change from yesterday. In fact, there are some areas where we're seeing some visibility reduced because of some mist and some fog like out near Bernie Stage Airfield. Visibility is down to about five miles. Today, though, we will see sunshine in the afternoon, 75 degrees. Tomorrow morning, starting off uh, cold, 39, and then a high temperature right near 70. Sunny and pleasant, beautiful for the big game tomorrow. I'll be back with a look at some big drops in temperatures across the nation coming up soon. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the latest to the connection of the case of the Balcones Heights police sergeant who was shot and injured earlier this week. One suspect has turned himself into authorities. The other still on the run this morning. The shooting happened Wednesday afternoon in the 6900 block of I-10. Our Alicia Beretta is live downtown with the latest details from the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, we know that those two brothers took off immediately after shooting police sergeant Joey Sepulveda. And now the manhunt for Wilfredo, Wilfredo Montemayor is the man still on the run this morning. So that's who Bear County Sheriff's Office is still looking for. Take a look at that suspect. Wilfredo Montemayor is wanted on attempted capital murder charge after shooting police sergeant Sepulveda in the neck and shoulder. The sheriff says Wilfredo may have changed his appearance, so take a close look. Last night, Wilfredo's brother, Sigifredo Montemayor, was extradited here to San Antonio and remains in custody of Bear County. County. He'll be charged with capital murder. Sigifredo was arrested in Tamaulipas, Mexico, so just south of the Texas-Mexico border, after he was attempting to seek medical care for a gunshot wound he sustained during the incident. Take a listen at what Sheriff Salazar had to say about the active manhunt for his brother, Wilfredo. We've got deputies, not just from our sheriff's office, but every county in between here in Laredo, watching the highways just for that. So I believe that he's here. I believe he's under an immense amount of pressure, and I can tell you definitively, uh, we're not going to give up, and we're not going to let up on that pressure, and he's not going to get a moment's rest until he's in this jail. Wilfredo is believed to be in the San Antonio area, but again, they have reason to believe he perhaps has changed his appearance. In the case of Sigifredo, he was taken into custody by Bear County last night, and our cameras were there to capture it. And the man didn't go in silently. Reporters asked him several questions, and specifically what the man had to say about Sergeant Sepulveda recovering from his injuries. I'll have that information, that reaction for you in the next half hour. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Also new this morning, San Antonio police trying to figure out how two men were shot overnight, why and who was responsible. Police say around 2.30 this morning, the men actually showed up to downtown Baptist Hospital on Dallas Street with the gunshot wounds. The victims telling police they drove themselves to the hospital. They claimed they were shot somewhere off of Malone. However, police were still unable to find that crime scene. At last check, the two men were stable. They are both expected to recover, and that investigation is still underway.
Now to the latest involving the coronavirus here in Bear County. The seven day average now sits at 1,361 cases per 24 hours. That's a slight increase from yesterday. There were also 11 new COVID-19 related deaths reported today. When it comes to our local hospitals, we have crossed a new benchmark with only 999, 999 COVID-19 patients admitted. 372 are in the ICU and 217 are in ventilators. It's taken us a while to get here. And the last time we had less than 1,000 COVID-19 patients in the hospital was back on December 26. And when it comes to vaccines, WellMed plans to give second doses of the Moderna next Monday. Health officials say it will be administered at Elvira Cisneros Senior Community Center and the Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior Community Center. WellMed is also waiting for an additional 6,000 first doses to arrive at its facility this weekend. Those who receive their first dose at one of the WellMed run clinics will receive a reminder notification about returning for their second shot. Once the doses are received, WellMed will reopen the hotline and schedule those 6,000 doses. The phone number to call when those vaccines have been received on your screen right there, 833-968-1745. And if you plan on getting on a plane anytime soon, you might want to listen up. Mayor Ron Nuremberg has amended his emergency order to reflect guidance from the CDC. Masks must be worn in all areas of the San Antonio airport. You've probably seen people on flights wear the masks, but now those masks have to be worn when you enter the airport, before you get on the plane, and even after you get on the plane right here in the Alamo City. Time now is 6.06, 50 degrees out. Well, turning on your oven or unlocking your door from your phone may be convenient for you. It is also convenient for hackers. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll show you a few ways to outsmart those smart home hackers. Mm. Sarah, do you like brunch? Absolutely. It's the best meal of the day. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> After the break, David Elder taking us inside Comfort Cafe, learning about one of their decadent, good word, brunch items. Oh my gosh, was that dessert or brunch? Who cares? Looks good. All right, 50 degrees outside at 6.07 this morning. Sarah Spivey says we might see the sun today. She'll have our weekend forecast when we come back. What is this one called and what exactly is inside of it? So that is a chocolate strawberry stuffed waffle. And it's got a chocolate drizzle with some cream cheese filling. And um, yeah, it's. <laughs> How do you approach this? Like, what do I, you. <laughs> just go for just it. Just go for it, okay. <laughs> just you get... need a lot of napkins. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is like a 20 napkin <laughs> meal right here. When you want something that's over the top, Comfort Cafe is your place to go. Whether it's sweet or savory, they got it. I mean, all the waffles they have that are stuffed with cream cheese, they have the different fruit and the candy toppings, the cookie toppings. I mean, it is unlike anything else you're gonna find here in the Alamo City. It's probably one of the funnest things that we're gonna, we've done in a while, yeah. here we go. Yeah. Got it. Wow, what I love the most is you do have that nice little texture on the outside of the waffle, but like you're saying, it's, it's very uh, soft, it's very mm -hmm. delicate. I mean, come on. Is that even brunch or Yum. is that dessert? Oh it's my like goodness. raining sugar in that. <laughs> that looks awesome. And um, I'm just gonna let you guys know a little behind the scenes. I've got mm. the seven day forecast behind me because I didn't push play on mm. my weather uh, slides. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll be able to get into we the weather. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. Not too much to see as we are not really seeing any sun out there yet, but it is cloudy. Uh, it's been cloudy for the last about 24 hours in San Antonio. Yesterday was cool. We were in the 50s for the most of the day and we're starting off at 50 degrees today, but we are going to see some sun today and it is gonna end up being a beautiful Saturday, although it will be a little breezy. 
and we are going to uh, be a little warm in the afternoon. Temperature is right now 48 in Comfort, 47 in Kerrville, 47 in Bandera. So just a little chilly up in the hill country, but we're not dealing with the 50, uh, 30s anywhere. Uh, 49 in Canyon Lake, 49 in Bilverde, 49 at Simpson and 51 in Pleasanton. A wider view here, cooler in Del Rio than here in San Antonio, 47 degrees in Del Rio and 43 your wake up temperature in Rock Springs. Look at Laredo, still at nearly 60 degrees down in Laredo. We are seeing some areas of fog and as I was coming into work this morning, I did notice some mist out there briefly here in San Antonio. So don't be surprised if in San Antonio you run into some areas of patchy mist, but the fog is well to our west out toward Uvalde, Carrizo Springs visibility there less than about a mile and a half visibility uh, down to two and a half miles out near Rock Springs. But today we are going to see the sun as I mentioned and you can really see that in the future cast. This is a very weak cold front. It's not going to cool us down. In fact, because we're going to be seeing the sun in the afternoon, it's actually going to be warmer today than it was yesterday. But that cool front is going to clear skies for us, as you can see in the future cast. Right at about lunch, we'll see skies clear here, here in San Antonio. And then for the rest of the afternoon, the rest of the warming period during the day, uh, we'll be able to warm up really nicely. Here's a look at high temperatures today. 77 in Del Rio, 75 in Eagle Pass, nearly 80 degrees in Laredo. 75 in New Braunfels, 71 in Kerrville, 77 in Pleasanton, and 75 here in San Antonio. That cool front is also going to make things pretty windy. Look at the future cast wind gusts, potential wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour as winds turn around to the northwest. It's going to be breezy. Thank goodness we're toward the end of mountain cedar season. And so that south northwesterly wind probably isn't going to do too much uh, to our mountain cedar count. So that's some good news there. So today cloudy and 54 at 10, but then clearing skies around noon. And notice that in four hours from noon to four, we're going to shoot up by about 15 degrees uh, because of the total sunshine. Winds from the northwest at 10 to 20, gusting up to 25, and it's going to be a chilly evening for us. Okay, showing you the satellite and radar. We've got some snowfall across parts of the central plains, but the really impressive thing across the nation is some very cold air to our north. Look at these temperatures to our north, three below in Minneapolis, 12 below in Bismarck, but even more impressive, let's look at Canada. Temperatures 45 below in Yellowknife. In fact, I had to change up our color table here uh, to be able to show just how cold it is across parts of central Canada, north central Canada. And uh, this Arctic air is going to spill across the United States in the week ahead. There is a great deal of uncertainty, though, about how far south this Arctic air is going to move towards San Antonio. One of the forecasting models is saying it's going to be very cold. Another forecasting model is saying that it's actually going to be a little bit on the warmer side. So we've done a compromise here until we can get a little bit of clarity. What we know is that tomorrow is going to be a beautiful Sunday, beautiful way to end the weekend. We'll have morning clouds on Monday and Tuesday and it'll be mild. And then toward the end of the week, that's when we're going to have to watch out for some colder air. What I think is going to happen is I think on Wednesday we're going to have some morning drizzle. It'll be mild but cooler than the other days at the beginning of the week. And then a cold front is going to push through on Thursday and that'll make us nice and chilly. In fact, temperatures will struggle to get out of the 50s on Thursday. We'll have a chance for isolated rain and then Friday should be nice and chilly with temperatures starting off in the 30s. So because there is uncertainty in the latter half of the forecast. It's a great time to make sure you have that KSAT weather app downloaded and make sure you stick with us as we uh, iron out the kinks in the forecast. All right, Sarah, thank you so much. 616, 50 degrees out. All right, still ahead, a new documentary is sharing details on the legal woes of Britney Spears. We are talking the new doc framing Britney Spears and the details on how you can watch. And are you prepared for a cyber attack? Me? Probably not. So just ahead, tips to protect yourself from a smart house hacker. Let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, nine, zero, fireball three, daily four, zero, five, two, eight, fireball five. And your cash five, 14, 19, 24, 27, 31. Mega millions, 14, 17, 28, 29, 44, big number two, mega fire four. Good luck. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend. More than 14 billion, yes, billion with a B, connected devices, also called smart devices, they were used in 2019. And now, 
by 2021, that number has reached 25 billion. And while turning on your oven or unlocking your car from your phone could be convenient, it's also easy for hackers. As this year, an estimated one in 15 people will have their identities stolen. Our Eric Hernandez has the details on ways to outsmart these smart home hackers. We have lots of Alexa devices. Indoor camera to like check out the house. Everything that we're creating to make our life easier and this is when things start to get out of control. To guard your home from a cyber strike, secure your Wi-Fi network. Most routers come with easy to guess generic settings. Change to a strong password. Next, diversify your passwords for all your devices and services. The Verizon 2019 data breach report stated that 80% of hacking breaches were related to weak passwords. Also, be sure to register all of your devices with the manufacturer. Most companies release software patches to upgrade security over time. If you decide to sell, give away, or toss out your smart device, most manufacturers advise that you factory reset your device and remove all personal data. A factory reset ensures the next person to get their hands on your device can't automatically access all your information or communicate with the other devices in your network. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. I'm like a whole generation behind when it comes to this technology Me thing. Me too. <laughs> too much. I can't too do much. anything on my phone except for listening to music. <laughs> Time now, 621, 50 degrees out. All right, just ahead, Adidas is celebrating Patrick Mahomes' return to the Super Bowl with some cash for fans. How much you can get for every minute the Kansas City star quarterback has possession of the ball on Sunday. Well, Adidas is celebrating Patrick Mahomes' return to the Super Bowl with money giveaways throughout the big game. That's right. So the sports apparel company Adidas is giving fans the chance to win $1,515 every minute the Kansas City star quarterback has possession of the ball tomorrow. So the 15s, you know, $1,515, they're nods to Patrick Mahomes' jersey number and his 15 and the Mahomes Foundation, his philanthropy. So fans only need to keep their smartphones handy to tweet hashtag Mahomes Zone sweepstakes as well as tag Adidas. That triggers an online registration form to be tweeted back to you. The company Adidas plans to match the final sweepstakes total for a donation to Mahomes Foundation. And in case you didn't know, Super Bowl 55 set for Sunday night in Tampa with Mahomes Chiefs facing Tom Brady the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Well, a new documentary is sharing details on the legal woes of Britney Spears. A pop singer is the focus of Framing Britney Spears, a New York Times presented documentary. The film explores the 13 years that Spears' father, Jamie, has served as her conservator. That means he has control over her daily affairs and financial decisions. Spears petitioned to replace her father in August, but the judge kept him as conservator and appointed a new co-conservator. Framing Britney Spears is available on Hulu and the cable network FX. All right, it's 626 and 50 degrees. Still ahead on our next half hour, new guidance from the CDC on reopening schools for in-person learning. Details on what needs to happen first. Plus, a third homeless camp pops up in San Antonio, this time outside a council member's office. Details on what the city plans to do to help the situation. Good morning and happy Saturday, 6.30 this morning, February 6th. So, Sarah, I'm not going to let you off the hook for this one. Okay. We started the 6 o'clock by you saying you stayed inside yesterday and just did artwork all day. Please elaborate. What artwork are you doing? No, I did. I made all of my Valentine's Day cards. Aww. You have to, like, make them by hand. You have to make them now. That way, when you send them in the mail, people get them by Valentine's Day. I'm so excited to see mine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yesterday a little gloomy. Sarah, what can we expect today? I'm just impressed that Sarah still makes Valentine's Day cards. <laughs> it was fun. I haven't done that since I was, I think, in the fifth grade. So way to go, oh. girl. All right, let's take a look at temperatures out there. It is chilly outside right now. 45 degrees at Bernie Sage Airfield, 47 in Kerrville, 51 in Castroville, 50 degrees here in San Antonio, and 52 in Pleasanton. Now, a couple of things to talk about in the forecast. Although we are seeing clouds outside right now, in the afternoon we'll see some sunshine, and it'll be breezy too. Uh, tomorrow's going to be sunny and very nice, and then next week we've got to talk about some Arctic air. Notice that I put a question mark after burr because 
There's a lot of uncertainty on how cold we're going to get here in San Antonio, but I'll break it down, all down for you coming up in just a few minutes in the full forecast. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. One of the suspects connected to the shooting of the Balcony Heights Police sergeant now in Bear County custody, 30 year old Sihifredo Montemayor turned himself into authorities in Mexico. Now he's being charged with attempted capital murder. Alicia Barrera is live downtown with what that suspect had to say about his involvement in the case. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, that suspect that's been arrested, Sigifredo Montemayor, he was the suspected getaway driver in this case of the shooting and was actually arrested in Tamaulipas, Mexico, so just south of the Texas border after he was seeking medical attention for a gunshot wound that he um, sustained during this whole exchange. Another focus of the investigation at this time is determining if any family members who live with Sigifredo helped him escape to Mexico or or know the whereabouts of his brother, Wilfredo Montemayor. If so, they could face felony and federal charges. That's according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office. And while being escorted by BCSO deputies, Sigifredo was asked why he did it and if he had any remorse about what happened on Wednesday. In Spanish, Sigifredo said he regretted it, but didn't do anything and decided to turn himself in because he loves his family. Let's listen to the encounter. Me da mucha felicidad que todavía esté vivo y voy a estar orando por él. So in Spanish, he replied, they asked him if, if he had any regret for what he had done or, again, how he felt about Sergeant Sepulveda being alive. And again, the, the answer was he did regret what, he, what his involvement was, and he's really happy that Sergeant Sepulveda is alive and recovering. And he ended by saying that he will be praying for him. The sheriff's office says in, in the case of his brother, Wilfredo, they are still searching for him. They do have reason to believe that he He's still in the San Antonio area, but the thing is that Wilfredo may have changed his appearance. So anyone with information is asked to call Crime Stoppers. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. In your latest news, another homeless camp under watch. This time it's outside of District 1 Council member Roberto Trevino's office. Trevino is not a fan of the city's abatement approach where these camps are emptied, saying it's not known where people will end up once the camps are cleared out. The city manager agreed to let people sleep outside the councilman's office for the next two to three weeks while the city works with its partners and his staff to help connect people with services. Just yesterday, a different homeless camp was cleared on the main street near I-35. It's about a mile away from the camp that was cleared out on Wednesday. The city says today's camp near I-35 was cleaned up after concerns it's not too close to the highway. We will leave a camp in place if there's no health or safety concern, if there's no suspected criminal activity. We would not abate it. The city says outreach teams do try to connect people to shelters or detox centers before the camps were cleared out. Only three were actually interested in those services, including a pregnant woman. Well, city officials are considering purchasing a hotel to help house homeless people. The Department of Human Services is preparing a recommendation for the city council. A timeline on that proposal is unclear. Now to the latest development on the case against former Bear County Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela. The legal battle will likely take longer because of this week's ruling. The case had 12 defenders learned a motion to sever the offenses against her was granted, meaning each charge will be tried against her individually instead of a consolidated indictment. Now, the first trial will center on the felony count of, ag of aggravated perjury. She also faces two felony counts of tampering with evidence and three misdemeanor counts of official oppression. So, remember, Barrientes Vela was forced out of office after she announced her run for the sheriff's office too soon. So, in regards to the charges she's facing, they follow a nine-month investigation by the Texas Rangers and the FBI. Former, former Bear County District Attorney Nico LaHood is representing her. Also important to mention that her co-defendant, former Precinct 2 Captain Mark Garcia, he faces one count of aggravated perjury and three counts of official oppression as well. The pair are scheduled to go into court on April 7th, but because of this pandemic, that could be postponed.
Well, earlier this week, we reported that former Councilman Greg Brockhouse was planning on filing his application to run for San Antonio mayor, and now it's official. He plans to hold a virtual event this afternoon. Brockhouse lost a close election in 2019 and has decided to throw his hat in the ring again. There are eight other candidates running for mayor, including the incumbent Ron Nirenberg, and there still could be more candidates. The deadline to file is next Friday. In your morning headlines, 1 million Moderna COVID-19 vaccine doses will be sent to pharmacies across the country next week. The vaccines are directly from the federal government, not from supply provided to states. The Biden administration announced this week that the vaccine rollout will launch on February 11th. Pharmacies will still be required to follow state-level eligibility requirements when administering the vaccines. And the CDC will release guidance on reopening schools this coming week. It has been almost a year of at-home learning, and for some, students are ready to get back into the classroom. But how to minimize the spread of COVID-19 is still the biggest concern on everyone's minds. Even with guidance and regulations, CDC officials say community spread has to be down before it's safe for teachers and students to re-enter those schools. Time now is 637, 50 degrees out. Well, still ahead, a look at your kitchen. You may think it's clean, but is it really? Ooh. What to look out for and how to keep your family healthy. All right, well, this is a story we've been talking about throughout the morning, an exclusive interview with Academy Award-winning actor and Texas native Matthew McConaughey, telling KSAT all about his new book, Green Lights. All right, all right, all right. Just Excited waiting. for that. We were just waiting all morning for that, weren't you? <laughs> also excited for the sun to come out later today, like Sarah Spivey has said. But what will our weekend forecast look like? And are we going to see a cold front at the end of this week? She'll let us know when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. He is an Academy Award winning actor known for his roles in True Detective, Dallas Buyers Club, A Time to Kill. Just to name a few, Matthew McConaughey, though, now has a new book, a memoir called Green Lights. Heard a lot about this book. SA Live's Jen Tobias Strusky caught up with the Uvalde native this week to chat about the book and his time growing up in South Texas. Take a look. Okay, if you don't know yet, let me give a proper introduction. Academy Award winning actor, father, husband, and author. And my favorite part, he's from Texas. Welcome, Mr. Matthew McConaughey. Hello, sir. Uh, how you doing, Jen? Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I like the introduction. <laughs> yes, I am from Texas. Born in Uvalde, raised in Long Island. awesome. Yes, indeed. This time last year, you and your family were actually surprised everybody down in Uvalde, didn't you? With the Chamber of Commerce event. Yeah, 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 yeah that's right. We, we took mom down there, got the two, both my brothers together. Um, went down there and we were we like to look for a reason to get down to south texas in his book green lights matthew shares stories growing up in uvalde with his parents and two older brothers every so often he still finds inspiration on those texas roads when i'll go on road trips to go ride or prepare for a character i always try to plan them where i can sneak through those towns and stay a day or two and have a little look and swing through as a stranger but i also like to if i can go in like this and i like looking back and going mm -hmm. oh yeah it remind. I mean, it reminds me. I go back to. I go back to Uvalde. I'm like, man, we grew up in like a, a, in a rancher's town. And we were out here. This is where. That's right. This is where I learned 4-H. Oh yeah, this is beautiful down here. You got the the, the, the rivers, the spring-fed rivers, which we went and swam in. Um, oh yeah, I remember. I learned to swim in the Frio uh, uh, um, after after the Llano. Um, and then I go to Longview and I and I see how it grew. And I go back to that place. I try to find that treehouse that I built. It's not there. I don't know where it is. But I dream about it. I think about it. Wow, this place has grown. I heard San Antonio in there. I, I listened to your audiobook and I also have this copy as well. You mentioned a few auditions, right? That you went to San Antonio. Did you get? Did you get those auditions? I was wondering. Or did you? <laughs> I would go, they had. They used to have a lot of music video auditions, so I'd be in class at UT, my page would go off and go, can you be in San Antonio for a Dwight Yoakam uh, video read in two hours? I'd be like, boop, boom, in the car, head down, hop out, do an audition. I didn't get it. I got, uh, I didn't get most of those. So I've heard a lot about his book, it sounds wild. Like he talked about in an interview about how he slept in a cage with, you know, a mountain lion and stuff. He's got a wild life. It's really cool. But you can actually 
later on on GMS 8 830, we're going to go more in behind the scenes uh, about this interview that Matthew McConaughey had with SA Live. That's right. So you can watch the extended interview right now at SALive.com. Just look for the article on the homepage. So Sarah Spivey, what was your big takeaway? Um, I just, he's just a really cool guy. That's yeah. my biggest takeaway. And I love that he's from Uvalde, of course. I've been out to Uvalde. It's beautiful. It is the rancher's town, that's for sure. Uh, and Uvalde typically is a couple of degrees cooler than us here in San Antonio in the morning hours and a couple of degrees warmer in the afternoon just because they're a little bit drier out to the west there. Uh, right now outside, Cloudy skies, 50 degrees, pretty much looks exactly the same out there as it did yesterday for us right now. But man, we're going to flip a switch and in the afternoon we'll see some sunshine. 47 degrees in Kerrville. Speaking of Uvalde, it's 47. Again, a couple of degrees cooler than us in San Antonio. 46 in Del Rio, 51 in New Braunfels, 49 in Gonzales, 52 at Pleasanton and uh, 53 in Catula. Visibility is down out to the west. We've got a quarter mile visibility because of some fog up in Rock Springs, down to a mile in Uvalde, down to two miles in Hondo, down to a mile and a quarter in Carrizo Springs, and down to two and a half miles in Catula. So there are some areas of uh, fog out there, and even around San Antonio, patchy mist in some places. I was able to come into work today and saw some of that mist out there. But watch what's going to happen because of a weak, cool front. We're going to see our skies clear very quickly right around lunch. That's that's when we're going to go from cloudy to sunny and then in the afternoon totally sunny skies for us. Uh, we'll be looking at high temperature probably in the mid 70s around San Antonio and along I 35 up to New Braunfels 75 degrees 77 in Valley 77 in Del Rio 77 in Carrizo Springs 79 down in Laredo so definitely close to 80 degrees out there. So even though we're starting off cool a little bit of sun today is going to allow us to warm up nicely warmer than yesterday by far by about 15 degrees. Now that a cool front is going to make things windier for us by the afternoon. We'll be looking at wind gusts of up to 25 miles per hour from the northwest. If you're worried about mountain cedar because of that gusty wind, keep in mind that we're toward the end of mountain cedar season, so we're probably not going to have a huge increase in mountain cedar, but we'll keep an eye on that pollen count for you just in case. So today becoming sunny and breezy, still cloudy at 10, but as soon as we see the sun, we're going to see those temperatures shoot up to 75 degrees and then a chilly evening as those winds uh, start to die down. So if you're watching the big game tomorrow, here's Sunday's uh, football forecast. We'll start off cold in the morning, 39 degrees, but sunny and comfortable in the afternoon, 70. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. On the satellite radar, a little bit of snow across the central plains, but the really impressive thing that everybody in the weather world is talking about is how cold the Arctic air is in Canada right now. Temperatures 45 below in Yellowknife, 42 below in Stony Rapids. I have to caution you, though, don't believe everything you see on social media as far as uh, cold air goes here in uh, central south central Texas, because there's still a great deal of uncertainty about how far south this Arctic air is going to push uh, some of the forecasting models are saying it's going to be very cold in San Antonio uh, by about Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Others are saying it's going to be on the more mild side. And so we've come to a compromise here until we can get a little bit of clarity. Uh, first thing that you need to know, though, is that tomorrow is going to be beautiful. Some morning clouds on Monday and Tuesday, mild on Monday and Tuesday. And then as we head into Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, that's when our forecast is going to switch and become a little bit cooler. Looks like we could see some drizzle on Wednesday, isolated showers on Thursday. For now, we're going high temperatures in the 40s and in the 50s around San Antonio. But again, that could that could change. It could be a lot colder depending on the clarity we get in the forecast toward the end of the week. So stick with us. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Time now is 648, 51 degrees out. Well, coming up next, the germiest place in your home may not be where you think how you can keep your family healthy. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KZDeals.com. Are you slouching while you're watching today? There's an easy way to improve posture and ease back pain. As seen on Shark Tank, Better Back Lux Posture Support can help retrain your body's default posture in just 15 minutes a day. People usually sit about nine hours each day, so why not do it right? Made from NASA-engineered memory foam for ultra-sitting comfort. 
slip resistant knee pads to help prevent sliding up when worn, custom webbing straps to get the best ergonomic fit. It's easy, just wrap the back pad around your back, wrap the knee straps around your knees, adjust the straps to stack your spine in the perfect posture. Now it folds up into a compact carry case and the retail price for this is $59, but the case at deals price is $49.99. That is a 16% discount. Again, it comes with this nice little case and you can get this deal plus many more on caseatdeals.com. Good morning and welcome back. When you think of the room with the most germs in your home, what room comes to mind? If you guess bathroom, try again. There's a good chance it is actually your kitchen. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz. Simple ways to avoid food poisoning and keep your family healthy. Your hands are essential cooking tools, but they can spread dangerous bacteria that make you sick. Everything you touch, salt and pepper shakers, faucets, fridge handles, are common surfaces where germs can hide and spread. So food safety experts say you need to wash with soap and water anytime you switch tasks. Knives and items that touch raw meat, wash those with hot soapy water after every use. The juices that collect on cutting boards can contain E. coli and other dangerous bacteria that can make you seriously ill. Regularly, you can wash them with hot soapy water, but to get them really clean, use one tablespoon of unscented liquid bleach in a gallon of water. Raw meats, poultry, and seafood stored on the upper shelves in your refrigerator can drip and contaminate food below, so keep them sealed and on the bottom shelf. And use a refrigerator thermometer to maintain 37 degrees to slow bacterial growth. The freezer should be no higher than zero. And about that phone or tablet you have in the kitchen, it can easily pick up contaminants while you cook, so wash your hands often when you're checking that recipe. And a food safety note, meat and eggs aren't the only things you should cook before eating. Raw flour can carry salmonella and E. coli, so resist the urge to sneak the raw cookie dough. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 654 and 51 degrees. Here's what's coming up on Good Morning America. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA Winter Blast, a new snowstorm targeting the Northeast this weekend and the life-threatening Arctic cold air moving into the Midwest. Rob is tracking the dangerous winter weather across the country. Plus, a Kansas City coach in a multi-vehicle car crash that has reportedly left one child with major injuries. The son of the Chiefs head coach involved in the accident just days before the big game. And finally, President Biden pushing to pass his COVID-19 relief package, making it clear he won't budge on the payment amount with millions struggling financially. How soon will Americans see those checks? It's all ahead here on GMA. Days after the shooting that left at Balcones Heights, police sergeant injured. One suspect is in custody, but his brother is still on the run this morning. The manhunt continues for this suspect, Wilfredo Montemayor. BCSO says this man shot police sergeant Sepulveda in the neck and shoulder. The sheriff's office says Wilfredo is more than likely in the San Antonio area, but may have changed his appearance. His brother was extradited from Tamaulipas, Mexico to San Antonio last night. Sheriff Salazar said Sigifredo Montemayor, a 30-year-old man, is the one who drove the getaway car last Wednesday. Sigifredo was arrested in Tamaulipas, Mexico, after he was attempting to seek medical care for a gunshot wound he sustained during the incident. And when asked what he felt knowing that Sergeant Sepulveda is recovering, Sigifredo said that he's thankful that's the case and will be praying for him. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, through this pandemic, families, businesses, and communities are dealing with the economic fallout. So how is San Antonio doing, and what is the plan going forward when it comes to our local economy? Tomorrow on GMSA, on GMSA at 8 a.m., Richard Perez, the president and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, is going to be joining us on Leading SA at 8 a.m. with some answers. If you have any questions you would like asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. In San Antonio this morning, we could see some patchy mist. Visibility is reduced by a couple of miles, but fog is more of an issue out to the west. In Hondo, Yavaldi, Carrizo Springs, Rock Springs, visibility is reduced significantly because of some fog out there. Now today it will become sunny and breezy, 75 for the high in the afternoon. Northwest winds gusting up to 25 miles per hour. A beautiful day tomorrow for the big game, and we'll see some clouds Monday and Tuesday morning.
colder though by the end of the week and we'll keep you updated on that temperature forecast. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See you at 8. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. The mayor announcing a new mandate for everyone traveling through the San Antonio International Airport. We have what you need to know. A scary morning for a woman taken out of her car with the jaws of life after crashing on the city's north side. More on what police say happened. And yeah, taking a live look at the Alamo City. Not much to look at right now, but what is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Saturday, February 6th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Sarah Costa, yesterday was both of our weekends, I guess, yeah. technically. What'd you do? I, I stayed basically inside. I made my Valentine's Day cards max a week early. Um, you know, it was kind of, it was dreary. It was one of those days where you just want to like wrap up in a blanket with the coffee. Sarah Spivey, is today going to be one of those days again? Well, it's definitely starting off like that, isn't it? it it's gray outside and it is cool, but we are going to see the sun today. So if you look outside and you think, hey, the weather's going to be the exact same as yesterday, not so fast. We will see sun in the afternoon, but first we do have to get through a cloudy and somewhat foggy morning. Here's a look at visibility uh, reduced to a quarter of a mile up I 10 toward Bernie stage airfield in the burning area. So uh, just use some caution out there. Visibility down to a mile and a half in New Braunfels down to three miles in San Antonio down to a half a mile out toward Castroville and three quarters of a mile out toward Hondo. In addition to the fog, we're also seeing areas of patchy mist out there. So again, it is kind of a gray and dreary morning. Temperatures are on the cooler side. It's 49 in Kerrville, 46 in Rock Springs, 47 in Del Rio, 48 in Uvalde, 50 in Hondo and 52 in Pleasanton, 50 here in San Antonio. Uh, and you know what? We are going to see that sun. In fact, a cool front, a weak cool front is going to move through and clear skies in the afternoon. It will be totally sunny, a high temperature near 75 degrees, so a little bit on the warmer side as well. And then tomorrow, Tomorrow for the big game, starting off early in the morning at 39 degrees, high temperature in your 70s. So we'll salvage a beautiful weekend after this gray start today. But a look ahead shows some very cold Arctic air on the way for the United States. The question is, how far south will that air push and will we get to see some of that cold air in San Antonio? I'll have your forecast in just a few minutes. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, scary moments for a woman this morning after a crash on the city's north side, and it all ended with the jaws of life. So take a look. This happened around 530 this morning. This is Highway 281 near Wurzbach Parkway. Police tell us the 40-year-old woman was driving northbound on 281. She saw an object in the middle of the road. She tried to avoid it. That is when the vehicle spun out of control, slammed into the wall. She actually was trapped inside her car. Emergency responders, when they got there, they had used the jaws of life to rescue her. Luckily, taken out of the vehicle, taken to University Hospital with only minor injuries. Officers on the scene tell us alcohol was not a factor. Right now, they're ruling the crash an accident. Now to the latest over the last few years. Well, it looks like we've seen more and more people living on the streets in and around the Alamo City. And District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino, he is working to stop the criminalization of homelessness here in San Antonio. Currently, he's worked with city leaders to allow for an encampment outside of his field office. Our Alicia Barrera is live there with the latest. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, during the week, the city has been clearing out encampments housed by those experiencing homelessness. And this is what it looks like here at Councilman Trevino's office. And he's put his foot down saying... Clearing out these encampments is not the way to go. Those living in tents and sleeping bags have taken refuge behind the councilman's field office off of I-10 and Vance Jackson. And honestly, this morning, we've just seen a handful of people. The city had planned to displace this community here, but they didn't show up yesterday and haven't showed up today. And according to the city, they now have permission to stay at the property for up to three more weeks. And although the city is working with Councilman Trevino to better serve those experiencing homelessness. City Manager Eric Walsh says criminal behavior won't be tolerated. And Councilman Trevino, of course, he wants this community here. It seems to be calm right now. 
they are looking at better solutions to her, to serve this community, including the idea of a hotel. We'll be looking more into that in the next hour at 9 a.m. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. To the latest coronavirus cases here at home, Mayor Ron Nirenberg announcing in his daily briefing 1,724 new cases. The seven-day moving average now sits at 1,361 cases. That's a slight increase from Thursday. 11 more people have died from this virus. There are 999 people in our local hospitals. 372 are in the ICU and 217 are on ventilators. The last time we had less than 1,000 patients in the hospital was back on December 26th. When his daily briefing, Mayor Ron Nuremberg amended an emergency order to align with the CDC's guidance. This new mandate requires masks to be worn in all areas of the San Antonio International Airport. This includes when you enter the airport, before you get on the plane, and even after you get off your flight right here in the Alamo City. WellMed is planning to give second doses of the Moderna vaccine next Monday. They will be administered at the Evira Cisnero Senior Community Center and the Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior Community Center. WellMed is waiting for an additional 6,000 first doses to arrive this weekend. When getting the new doses, WellMed will reopen the hotline for those to schedule their appointments. The number to call on your screen right now, 833-968-1745. Walk-ins will not be accepted. And it may not be exciting or something to many people to rush to read about, but it's incredibly important in this week's episode of Case Ad Explained. It's all about redistricting. It really is so important. It's something everyone in Texas should learn about. So later this year, the Texas legislature will take up the task of redrawing the lines of our state's congressional and legislative maps. Case Ad Explains producer Lexi Salazar. She steps into the breakdown booth, explaining a little bit about what we can expect. So this week's episode of Case That Explains is all about redistricting. We know it's not the sexiest of topics and maybe you even think it's boring. You certainly would not be alone in that thought. But before you decide to skip out on this episode, hear me out. Later this year, the Texas legislature will be tasked with redrawing our congressional and legislative maps. They'll be able to do this after they finally get the results from the 2020 census. These maps determine how we're represented on the state level and at the national level. And if you've ever looked at the shapes that make up the map, you probably think that those shapes look pretty random. They look like nonsensical puzzle pieces. But here's the thing. The shapes aren't random. They look that way by design, of course, through the process known as redistricting. And it's not just an aesthetic problem. The strategic way districts are drawn could disenfranchise voters of color and dilute the impact of whole communities. Simply put, this is a really important process. And we hope in this week's episode of KSAT Explains, we made it kind of entertaining. We even included Tetris. Our hope is that the KSAT Explains team does for redistricting what Schoolhouse Rock did for bills. My only regret is that we didn't include a jingle to go along with the episode. KSAT Explains Redrawing the Map is available to stream on demand right now. You can find it at ksat.com slash explains or on the KSAT TV app, any way that you stream. And big shouts to Lexi and RJ and all the whole KSAT Explains crew. I was talking to them earlier this week. It is going to be such an interesting episode. Time now is 8.08, 50 degrees out. Well, what we can eat helps us or can cause health problems. Still ahead, why colorful foods keep our immune system running at peak efficiency. Plus, next on GMSA, David Elder taking us inside a Mexican-style hot dog food truck to try a hot dog loaded with carne asada. Brexit mm. champions right there. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. All right, there's some of that fog <laughs> that Sarah Spivey was talking about. When will it clear up? And will we actually see the sun today? She says... Yes, she believes she, we, we will. When we come back, she'll have our full weekend forecast in just a bit. Yeah, this is the vaquero. This one's loaded. Comes with um, grilled onion, uh, bacon, asada meat, cilantro, mayo, mustard, ketchup, and it's also with the beef food long uh, bacon grab. Give it a bite, the vaquero. Let me give you some napkins. <laughs> Woo. That's the, that's the proof. <laughs> that's how you know it's good. That's awesome, bro. That's really good. This is so fun, and it has such fun textures to it as well, but it's just good. 
Who doesn't like hot dogs? It just reminds me of Everyone. like the Fourth of July. It's absolutely delicious. And then the, the all beef hot dog in there wrapped in bacon. You're searing it on the flat top end, so you're getting a really nice crust. The cilantro, the mustard, it has a kind of vinegar bite. It's helping cut through some of that fat from the bacon as well in the asada. I've eaten a lot of different kinds of hot dogs in my day, but I've never had them dressed up like this. I think all the different flavor combinations are really nice. Guys, come on. Breakfast of champions over there. I know. I know he said dressed up hot dog, and he means that food <laughs> is dressing up the hot dog, but I couldn't help but think of like a hot dog in, in a, a little tuxedo. dress. <laughs> <laughs> That's where our mind goes in the morning, kind of or a little loopy in the morning hours. Uh, and the weather today is going to be a little loopy, starting off cloudy, but ending up totally sunny. Outside right now, yeah, I can't really see anything. That's because the fog and the mist have become more prevalent out there this morning. In fact, the reason why you're seeing the rain there on that icon is because the airport is measuring light rain and mist. Visibility is down to three miles at the airport, but there are areas around San Antonio that are actually dealing with lower visibility. So if you have plans to be out this morning, make sure uh, to use those low beams rather than the high beams. Temperatures, it's on the cool side, 47 in Del Rio, 49 in Kerrville, 49 in Hondo, 50 here in San Antonio, as I mentioned, 51 in New Braunfels and 50 in Gonzales. Here's a look at visibility. We see visibility slowly deteriorate over these morning hours. Visibility down to a mile in Uvalde, down to a mile in Catula, down to less than a mile in Hondo, down to a mile and a quarter in Kerrville and up by 35 toward New Braunfels down to practically zero in Rock Springs. But help is on the way in the form of a very weak cool front and we're going to see the sun pretty quickly here. It may not look like it outside right now, but trust the future cast. Notice how when we see that front move through right around lunch, skies are going to go from cloudy to sunny like that. It's going to get nice and sunny pretty quickly. In fact, we'll be looking at high temperatures pretty on the warm side because of the sunshine. Upper 70s out toward Del Rio and Uvalde and Hondo. Mid 70s along that I-35 corridor up north, but at close to 80 degrees down toward Laredo and Catula. In addition to the clearing skies, we're also going to see winds become breezy, gusting up to about 25 miles per hour from the northwest. If you've been paying attention to the weather, you know a northwest wind this time of year sometimes allows for mountain cedar to go up. We are at the end of mountain cedar season though, so that is some good news. Don't expect the number to go up too much more than where it is right now in the low range uh, with those winds from the north just because cedar season is coming to an end. So today in summary, cloudy to start with some areas of patchy drizzle and fog and then skies are going to be clearing. Uh, breezy 75 for the high, gusts up to 25 miles per hour in a chilly Saturday evening. Tomorrow, of course, is a big game. We're going to wake up Sunday cold. 39 degrees at the airport in San Antonio for that low. And then in the afternoon, 70 for the high temperature. If you want to throw some football outside with the family, it's going to be pretty good for that in the afternoon before the game starts. East winds at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Taking a look at satellite and radar, we've got some snow across the central plains, but the big thing that everybody is talking about is this cold Arctic air, which is sitting to our north. Look at that, 13 below in Bismarck, 3 below in Minneapolis, but look across Canada. 45 below in Yellowknife, 45 below in Stony Rapids, very cold up in Canada. The question is, how far south is this Arctic air going to push? Northern tier of the United States is going to be on ice, but how far south will it push? We still have to wait and see. There are indications that we will have a cooler second half of the week with temperatures struggling to get out of the 40s and 50s, but there's still a big question mark on how cold it will get. So we'll keep you informed about that. There will be some drizzle and some isolated rain on Wednesday and Thursday. However, the first part of the week is going to be pretty mild. Morning clouds on Monday and Tuesday and highs in the 70s. Keep up to date with us as we get a more clearer picture and iron out the kinks of that temperature forecast for the end of next week. Do heaters even work in negative 45 degree Ooh. weather? <laughs> like, how do you keep warm in that? They do, they do, but that's some dangerous cold up there oh for gosh. sure. Bless their hearts in Canada. <laughs> now, All right, right. <laughs> it's 17, 50 degrees. <laughs> and are you thinking about what you're going to eat during the big game, but you don't want to cook? Still ahead, we have some big game takeout deals. And then we all know what we want to eat and what keeps us healthy. Next, why colorful foods keep our immune system running at peak efficiency. 
want a healthy immune system to help fight off infection, especially during a pandemic, and our diet plays an important role. That's right, it does. Eric Hernandez tells us how regularly eating colorful fruits and vegetables, especially during the big game, is a good place to start. Food is something that we likely all love and we all absolutely need. But there are certain foods that we should be eating more of to maintain a healthy immune system. Some of the obvious things that we always want to look at is antioxidants, phytonutrients. We're going to get those from plant-based whole foods and foods that have a lot of color. So the foods that have a lot of color, that indicates they have a lot of vitamins and minerals. Kirkpatrick says you should pay special attention to vitamin C, which may help prevent and shorten infections. Vitamin D also supports immune health, but the body doesn't absorb it well from food. So you'll want to consider a supplemental form like D3. She adds gut health is important as well, so be sure you're getting enough probiotics and fiber. It's also important to talk about things that make the immune system less likely to perform well. So that is highly processed food, fast foods, added sugars. Um, those all negatively impact gut health. They all negatively impact the immune system as well. Kirkpatrick also recommends switching to a whole foods diet, which is primarily plant-based to keep your immune system strong. Regular exercise and good sleep habits will also help immune health. Erica Fernandez, KSAT 12 News. So I love that Erica does all these stories, but I gotta say, Tomorrow, during the big game, probably not going to have too many fruits and vegetables. No diet. No, it, it's a holiday. Yeah. Super Bowl Sunday. There you you don't, diets don't count. All right, 822, 51 degrees out. Well, if you're getting ready for this Sunday, but go. you don't know what big game snacks you can make, we've got you covered. Next, we'll tell you some about some, some of these big game takeout deals. Good morning and welcome back and happy weekend. Regardless of how you plan to watch the big game, a good snack is always the best companion. But if you don't like cooking, like myself most days, we have some big game takeout deals that you should take advantage of thanks to some local San Antonio restaurants. It's definitely going to be a day to splurge from pizza to barbecue to Tex-Mex to seafood. Local eateries are offering specials on meals and family platters for a socially distanced big game watch party at home. For example, Alamo Barbecue Company is offering their super sports package. Bubba Gump Shrimp oh. is offering 10% off pre-ordered party platters to go. Just to be clear, the rule is calories don't count on holidays. Nope. Big game is clearly a holiday. So we have a full list of all the restaurants that are offering these great deals and all the contact info. Just head over to KSAT.com. Sarah, what is your go-to football food? I like hot dogs. Okay. But nothing like crazy dressed up like David Elder was showing us earlier. Just, just mustard. That's, That's it. fair. I think we're running out of time, but the producer hasn't yelled at me yet. 626, <laughs> 51 degrees out. Well, in the next half hour, the results of a study about how much employees actually work while working from home still ahead in our Did You Know segment. Plus, next, we are talking the possibility of stimulus checks and could they be headed your way before March? President Biden meeting with House Democrats to talk about the latest edition of the COVID relief package. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 8.30 this morning, Saturday, February 6th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. And you know, we've been talking about the big game and earlier on GMA, I heard the funniest description of it. They said it was like mm. baby Yoda, Patrick Mahomes against Yoda, Tom Brady. Baby goat versus real Baby goat. Baby Yoda versus real Yoda. So Grogu versus Yoda. Sarah Spivey, who's your pick? Baby Yoda, Patrick Mahomes, or Big Yoda? Okay, you guys know I am an avid Chiefs fan. <laughs> so go so Grogu. Of course I have to say go Grogu, <laughs> go Baby Yoda. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I will definitely be watching that game in full Chiefs gear. Really excited. All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside with visibility. We are looking at some fog in the area and also some mist and drizzle as well. That's what's reducing visibility too. visibility in Kerrville down to less than a mile. Visibility down to a mile in Hondo, down to half a mile in Castroville, down to three miles down in Pleasanton and three miles around San Antonio as well. But you go up to Bernie Stage Airfield and you can see visibility down to a quarter of a mile. So looking outside right now, you might be thinking, oh, wow, we're we're in store for a pretty gray 
Saturday. Not so fast because in the forecast, we're going to talk about how we'll have afternoon sunshine. and It'll actually be a very beautiful, beautiful Saturday afternoon. Sunday is going to be great too, sunny and nice outside. Next week, we're going to be monitoring some Arctic air. Notice how I put burr question mark. There's a lot of question marks in the forecast for next week, so I'm going to try to help sort everything out in the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Well, the manhunt for a suspect who shot and injured a Balcones Heights police sergeant now entering a third day. The Bear County Sheriff says the search for him is across the county and down into the border. This is Wilfredo Montemorior. The sheriff thinks he may have changed his appearance. He's wanted on an attempted capital murder charge in the shooting of Sergeant Joey Sepulveda. His brother, Sigifredo Montemayor, was allegedly hiding out in Mexico with a family member. He self-surrendered to authorities at the border, it is now in jail. The sheriff says authorities across the region, region, region are pounding the pavement in the relentless search for the suspected triggerman. We've got deputies, not just from our sheriff's office, but every county in between here in Laredo, watching the highways just for that. So I believe that he's here. I believe he's under an immense amount of pressure, and I can tell you definitively, uh, we're not going to give up, and we're not going to let up on that pressure, and he's not going to get a moment's rest until he's in this jail. Well, the sheriff says family members may also be facing felony and federal charges if he's not found quickly. If you have any information, that number for Crime Stoppers on your screen, 210-224-STOP. New developments in the case against former Bear County Precinct 2 Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela. A motion to sever the offenses against her was granted, meaning each charge against her will be tried one after another instead of a consolidated indictment. The first trial will center on the felony count of aggravated perjury. She also faces two felony counts of tampering with evidence and three misdemeanor counts of official oppression. Barrientes Vela was forced out of office after triggering the resign to run law after announcing she was going to be running for sheriff's office, but she announced it too soon, which meant she had to leave her current position. Now, the charges follow a nine month investigation by the Texas Rangers and the FBI. Former Bear County District Attorney Nico LaHood he is representing Barrientes Fela. And her co-defendant, former Precinct 2 Captain Mark Garcia, he also faces one count of aggravated perjury and three counts of official oppression. The pair are scheduled to go to trial on April 7th. Well, now to an update on Council Member Clayton Perry and his battle with COVID-19. Perry says he is now recovering at home and, quote, feeling much better. He took the time to encourage residents to keep your guard up, even around close friends, saying, quote, we must stay vigilant, wear masks, wash your hands, and practice social distancing when possible, end quote. Politics now and the question of whether Americans will receive another stimulus check anytime soon. President Biden says struggling families cannot wait for the lengthy bipartisan negotiations over his massive COVID-19 bill. He wants action and he wants it now. Biden also made news about whether his predecessor, Donald Trump, should continue to receive intelligence briefings. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Washington. Overnight, President Biden taking aim at former President Trump days before his impeachment trial is set to begin. In an interview with CBS, Biden saying he doesn't think his predecessor should receive intelligence briefings because of, quote, erratic behavior. What value is giving him an intelligence briefing? What impact does he have at all other than the fact he might slip and say something? This as the clock is ticking on Capitol Hill as Congress works to help millions of Americans amid a faltering economy and devastating pandemic. So I'm going to act. I'm going to act fast. President Biden calling for swift action on his nearly $2 trillion plan with or without Republican support. I'm going to help the American people are hurting now. At the core of the package, $160 billion for vaccinations and testing and help for small businesses, as well as a 1400 direct payment to many Americans. The House now pushing forward with Biden's plan after Senate approval and the way the bill's framed, they don't need any GOP votes. They're not interested in doing the hard work it takes to build consensus. But the president making it clear the payment amount is non-negotiable. They're going to be $1,400, period. Friday's dismal jobs report only adding to the urgency. 
Nearly 18 million Americans are now claiming some form of unemployment, and more than 50 million people, including one in four children, are going hungry. For some, that next round of relief can't come soon enough. Months after getting COVID, Tony Bowens is still recovering and hasn't been able to work. The hardest part has been trying to get, get by every day. And so you're looking, and now you're looking for work, and a lot of jobs are gone because places are closing. With the House passing that budget resolution, the next steps begin. Congressional committees working to get a bill on the president's desk before those federal jobless benefits expire March 14th. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. And the CDC published its latest data on COVID-19 vaccinations here in the United States. The CDC says more than 58 million doses of vaccinations have been distributed so far and nearly 37 million of them have actually been administered. About seven and a half million people are fully vaccinated now, while nearly 29 million people have received only one dose. The CDC updates the data on its COVID-19 tracker each and every evening. Well, California churches fighting the state's pandemic restrictions have received a partial victory from the U.S. Supreme Court. In a divided ruling, the high court blocked California's COVID-related ban on indoor worship in hardest hit counties. However, justices allowed some restrictions to remain in place. Those include capacity limitations by percentage and a ban on singing and chanting during services. The legal challenges were brought by two churches, one in the greater Los Angeles area and another in the San Diego area. It is 837 and 51 degrees. All right, all right, all right. Still ahead, a little bit of an exclusive interview with SA Live an award-winning actor. Yes, you guessed it, Matthew McConaughey. I thought my impression was okay. Good, not great. I think you did pretty well, Max. Well, are you still burnt out from 2020? <laughs> you are not alone. Next in our Did You Know segment, a study about Americans planning to take back their vacations this year. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City. Not much to look at right now, only 51 degrees, but what is the rest of the day? What does the weekend look like? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. In today's Did You Know segment, a new research study shows that people working from home are putting in more hours than before the pandemic. A New York-based company that provides VPNs for businesses found working from home led to a two and a half hour increase in the average workday for people in the UK, Austria, Canada, and right here in the United States. It also noticed a 41% increase in business VPN service traffic on Thanksgiving. Well, also, did you know Americans are planning to take back their vacations this year? Expedia's annual deprivation study found that 64% of respondents felt vacation deprived. That's a 3% increase from last year. 42% had to cancel at least one trip in 2020 because of the COVID-19 pandemic. To make up for that, people plan to take more vacation days than usual this year in the U.S. That means an increase from the average eight days of vacation to 13. All right, so I myself had to cancel about three vacations oh, during this pandemic. It's fine, you know, as long as the family and friends are safe and healthy, that's all we can ask for. But once pandemic ends, where are you guys gonna go? Um, I'm gonna try to drive to New York to see one of my best friends hey, who just bought drive. a house up there. Yeah, but it's gonna be like a two week thing. Oh, okay. Taking it slow. <laughs> cool, that's awesome. I'd like to go to Utah. Okay. It's cold in Utah, and it's mountainous, which I love all of those things. Outside right now, though, I want to show you the time lapse from this morning. Earlier this morning, before the sun rose, you know, we really weren't dealing with that much fog, but watch as the fog and the mist slowly increase on the time lapse here. Really impressive to see that on the time lapse. And outside right now, we are seeing mist being reported at the airport, and visibility has been reducing. Visibility is now down to two miles at the airport from the three just a couple of minutes ago and at Bernie Sage Airfield right along I 10 there at the Kendall and Bear County line visibility down to a quarter of a mile down to half in Castroville down to a mile and a half in Hondo down to half a mile in Kerrville down to a mile and a quarter up in New Braunfels. So we are definitely seeing areas of fog and drizzle out there. Visibility is low as zero in Rock Springs and down to a mile and a half in Uvalde. So be careful on the roads if you have to go out early this morning, but don't be disheartened. We are going to 
see the sun a little bit later today, all because of a weak cool front, but very cold air is to our north. Look at that 13 below in Bismarck, three below in Minneapolis. And let's just get right down to it. The forecast that a lot of people are talking about cold Arctic air. Look at this very cold air across parts of Canada. In fact, I had to switch up the color table just to be able to see these very cold temperatures across northern Canada. Yellowknife at 45 below, Stony Rapids at 44 below. That is very, very polar air. And the question is, how far south is that polar air going to go by about Thursday? through Friday of next week. We are going to see cold air across the northern tier of the United States. No question about that. It's just us here in San Antonio and South Central Texas that have the big question mark. This is a look into Friday. I do believe that we are going to cool down at least somewhat by Thursday and Friday, but one of the forecasting models is telling us 20s. The other is telling us 80s, so we need some time to figure this out. Uh, but what I can do is I can uh, generally pretty much average what I think is going to happen. So by Thursday and Friday, our temperatures, high temperatures should fall into the 40s and into the 50s, which is much cooler than will be today. In the high risk future cast, we are seeing some fog right now and some cloudy skies, but that cool front is going to move through. It's going to clear skies for us and it's going to be a sunny afternoon, 75 degrees for the high temperature with very gusty winds up to about 25 miles per hour from the north. We'll start off tomorrow on the cold side, upper 30s for the morning low tomorrow with clear skies and calming winds and then by tomorrow afternoon we'll be able to see a high temperature comfortable near 70 degrees. So today is going to be a beautiful sunny and breezy day. Just still going to see some clouds and potentially some mist uh, through about 10 and then in the afternoon 75 for that high. A gorgeous afternoon on deck for us and a beautiful day tomorrow as well. Well morning clouds on Monday and Tuesday it'll be mild with a high temperature in the 70s and then here's that big question mark toward the end of our forecast. I do believe we will have drizzle and isolated rain on Wednesday and Thursday. The question is, how cold are we going to go? And what I know now is that it will be a little cooler on those days. We'll just continue to update that temperature forecast as we get closer to the end of next week. As All long right. as it's not negative 45. <laughs> it won't be negative 45. <laughs> I can promise you that. Good. Thank you, Sarah. 846, 51 degrees out. Well, next on GMSA, SA Live has an exclusive sit-down interview with award-winning actor Matthew McConaughey about his new book, Green Lights. All right, all right, all right. Oh, Christ. How you doing? All right, all right, all right. Remember that line from... Days and Confused, now we're going to hear a story about what made it so famous. Well, award-winning Texas actor Matthew McConaughey recently released his new book, Green Lights, which spent weeks at the top of the New York Times bestseller list. That's right. This week, Jan from SA Live caught up with Matthew McConaughey. Super jealous she got to interview Matthew McConaughey. They talked about his virtual book tour, and she learned behind the scenes some of the stories and a lot of info on the first three words he ever said on film. I get cast in Days and Confused because um, I went to the right bar, right time, introduced myself to the right guy. I come to the set of Days and Confused one night. I'm doing a hair and makeup and wardrobe test, meaning I'm not supposed to work that night. It means the actor that's going to work later, which I was supposed to work a week later, I show up, I do my go through hair, makeup, wardrobe. I step out of the trailer. When the director, Richard Linkletter, has time, he walks over offset, looks you up and down, gives some notes approves, disapproves, whatever, and he say, see you later, and you come back to work next week. Well, this night, I step out, Rick comes up, looks at me, yeah, like this, like this, like this. All right, cool, later, and he goes, hey, hang on a second. He goes, you know, uh, you think Wooderson, the character I was playing, he's like, you think Wooderson would be interested in the redheaded intellectual girl? And I was like, oh yeah, man, Wooderson likes all kinds of chicks, right? So he's like, well, you know, Marissa Rabisi's over here, She's playing Cynthia, the redheaded intellectual. She's sitting at the top notch drive through with her kind of nerdy friends. Maybe Wooderson pulls up and tries to pick her up. And I'm like, sure, man. Well, next thing I know, I'm in the car getting mic'd up, about to shoot my first scene where there's not a line written. Okay, but I'm there she is. There's the redheaded intellectual. I'm going to pull up and go pick her up. There's no lines, but let's just do what I do. And I'm starting to get a little nervous. So I'm going over in my head, who is my man? Who's Wooderson, right? What am I about? And I said, Wooderson is about his car. And I'm like, well, I'm in my 1970 Chevelle. 
There's one. I said, Wooderson's about rock and roll. I said, well, I got Ted Nugent Stranglehold in the eight track. There's two. I said, Wooderson's about getting high. I said, well, I got Slater, who's always got a doobie rolled up riding shotgun. There's three. And that's when I hear action. And I look up at Cynthia, the redheaded intellectual, who I'm going to pull up and try to pick up. And I, in my head, I say, and the fourth thing I'm about is picking up chicks. And I said, I got three out of four. Put it in drive. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Oh, Christ. How you doing? I'm going to get the fourth. <laughs> that was it. So that was where that came from. It was three like affirmations of what my character had on the way to go get the fourth. First three words I ever said on film. That's amazing. And like you said in the book, people have this tattooed, they have it on shirts, they, I mean, and that has to feel, how do you feel about that? <laughs> well, you know, some people go, do you get tired of it? I'm like, hell no, I don't get tired of it. For that reason, this is the first three words I said in film in 1992 on a, on, on improvised on the first day on a job that, hell, I didn't know if that was going to be like a one-off. Like I would be a, a lawyer right now going, oh, I remember back in 92, that was really fun. I got that little acting gig in that film called Days of Fuse, my one and only time I ever got to do it. Well, it turned out to be much more than a hobby. Yeah. It turned out to be a career for me. Right. So here I'm doing it 28, 29 years later. So it's pretty cool when people say it because I'm like, whether they know it or not, I'm saying you're calling back to the very first three words I ever said okay. on the very first day of what turned out to be a career for me. Well, that was SA Live's Jen Tobias Strusky reporting. We'll see another expert from this interview tomorrow on GMSA. That is so amazing. You can watch the whole interview right now, SALive.com. Just look for the article on the homepage. Uh, all right, 8, 855. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Degrees. And we are talking Spurs big game preview right after the break. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs, go the Spurs in Houston. They're going to be taking on the Rockets tonight without three key players. Let's break it down. LaMarcus Aldridge, he is already out with soreness in the right hip. Lonnie Walker now announced to be out with a stomach illness, and DeJounte Murray, soreness in his left ankle. First time the Spurs taking on the Rockets since splitting a pair of games in San Antonio. The Spurs coming off that big win against Minnesota, fourth quarter comeback and a one game road trip before hosting the Golden State Warriors on Monday and Tuesday. Then they're gonna be embarking on their annual 15 day, seven stop rodeo road trip. So here we go, breakdown for tonight. Spurs 12 and 10, taking on the Rockets at 500, 10 and 10, seven o'clock. There we go, Toyota song. I was struck when I first walked in of how large it's grown. Yes, well, it's been a blessing, right? And here in San Antonio, we, you know, we're you know, 14, 15,000 students, which is amazing. So this is one of my favorite stories. It started as a dream 20 years ago, and now it has flourished. Sunday night, tomorrow night on Instant Replay, KSAT 12 Sports. They begin their exclusive sit-down with the Admiral, David Robinson. Talking about the idea, Carver Academy, what it has grown into and what is next for the school now that his son, David Jr., is working alongside with him. Don't miss it. Instant replay tomorrow night. This and all the big game coverage. Instant replay, 11 p.m. tomorrow. Very excited. 857, 52 degrees out. We'll still ahead how organizers with the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo are preparing for big crowds. What you can expect if you're planning on attending. During the week, the city of San Antonio has cleared out encampments housed by those struggling with homelessness. But Councilman for District 1, Roberto Treviño, says it's simply not the way to go. After the break, how the city is weighing in to propose better solutions. Good morning, welcome back and happy weekend at 9 o'clock this morning, Saturday, February 6th. Thank you so much for joining us. So yesterday we had some gloomy weather. I know for us it was technically like our Sunday. What'd you do? How'd you spend the day? Stayed in all day. What'd you work on? My Valentine's Day cards. Love it. So creative. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like a good homemade paper cut Valentine's Day card. I know, Sarah, it's by you were saying you haven't made one since fifth grade. But I know. I was kind of... Uh it makes it was nostalgic while making yes, them. Yes, absolutely. And that was kind of a joke. You know, it was kind of poking fun. Was calling you a fifth grader. No, I was not calling Sarah a fifth grader. In fact, I think it's very sweet and very awesome. And I expect my Valentine's Day card to be wonderful. <laughs> All right. It is still kind of gloomy outside, though, this morning. In fact, we are seeing fog 
and mist being reported at the airport. Visibility down to two miles at the airport, down to a mile at Bernie Stage Airfield, down to a mile and a quarter out west toward Castroville, down to a mile in Pleasanton, down to a mile in New Braunfels, down to three quarters of a mile in Kerrville. So yes, there uh, is fog, low clouds, and some mist. In fact, ceilings are where the clouds start are only at 400 feet out there. So very low clouds. That's leading to some fog and some mist in the area. 52 in Helotus, so it is cool. 50 in Birdie Stage Airfield, 51 in Kerrville, 51 in Hondo, 51 in New Braunfels, and 50 in Canyon Lake. You know, yesterday we didn't see the sun. Most of us didn't see the sun around San Antonio, but today we will see the sun, all because a weak cool front is going to move through, honestly, within the next two, three hours, and that's going to clear skies for us and allow for a high temperature near 75. We'll wake up tomorrow morning at 39, and it'll be sunny and pleasant for the big game tomorrow, uh, 70 degrees. If you plan on maybe throwing football with some family or something like that, it, it'll be gorgeous tomorrow. So we will salvage a beautiful weekend after this morning's gray start. And then the question in the week ahead is all about Arctic air. How cold will it get here in San Antonio? Will the Arctic air make it to us? Well, I'm going to try to help solve some of those problems coming up in the full forecast. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. In your top stories, a woman is shaken up after she was rescued by the Jaws of Life this morning. It happened just after 530 in high, on Highway 281 in Warsbach Parkway. Police say the 40-year-old woman was driving northbound of 281 when she saw an object in the middle of the road and tried to avoid it. That's when the car spun out of control and slammed into the wall. She got trapped inside of her car and EMTs had to use the jaw of life to take her out. She was taken to University Hospital with minor injuries. Officers on scene tell us alcohol was not a factor and they are ruling this an accident. Well, during the week, dozens of people experiencing homelessness were displaced after city crews dismantled homeless camps across town. Well, District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino has actively fought against this approach and allowed for those in need to take refuge on his property of his field office. Alicia Barrett joining us live from the area with more on what's next for this community. Good morning, Alicia. Hi, good morning. Well, the encampment will remain in place for up to three weeks from today, and that's behind the field office of Councilman District 1, Roberto Trevino. And it's really a smaller encampment. Today, we've seen just a handful of people, and already they've packed up their things and left. But earlier this morning when we arrived here, we saw some resting in sleeping bags, a few in a tent, and most lined up along the wall wrapped in blankets to keep warm. But What's the bigger picture moving forward? The latest idea to help alleviate homelessness here in San Antonio is to possibly buy a hotel for transitional housing. And this isn't an entirely new idea, as already the city, the city is leasing two hotels, including one at Haven for Hope, to help those experiencing homelessness. The city does want to avoid violent crimes, which council members, including Jada Andrew Sullivan from District 2 and Trevino for District 1, understand. However, both elected officials say that there's enough money, enough resources. So they're hoping that together with other city leaders, they can find a better approach to uh, help this issue that is a big one here in San Antonio. And again, here until then, it's unclear exactly what the future holds for those who have been displaced due to the city dismantling these encampments throughout town. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, Kesa, 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Now to the latest in the pandemic here at home. Our seven-day rolling average now sitting at 1,361 new cases every 24 hours. That's a slight increase from yesterday. We also now know 11 more people have died. So when it comes to our local hospitals, we have crossed the new benchmark. Only 999 COVID-19 patients admitted, 372 in the ICU, 217 of them are on ventilators. It's taken us a while to get here. The last time we had less than 1,000 patients in the hospital, that was way back on December 26th. Well, when it comes to vaccines, WellMed plans to give second doses of the Moderna vaccine next Monday. Health officials say it will be administered at the Elvira C. Snedo Senior Community Center and the Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior Community Center. WellMed is also waiting for an additional 6,000 first doses to arrive at its facility this weekend. Those who receive their first dose at one of the WellMed run clinics will receive a reminder notification about re returning for their second shot once the 
first doses are received, WellMed will reopen the hotline and schedule those 6,000 doses. The number to call when those vaccines have been received is on your screen, 833-968-1745. And another big topic when it comes to the pandemic is events, fiesta postponed, parades were canceled, but there is still hope for the rodeo. Officials saying that preventing the spread of COVID-19 is their top priority when it comes to the rodeo. Now we got a tour of some of the changes made to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. Officials telling us they are following all of the state guidelines issued by Governor Greg Abbott. Now, seats will be socially distanced. It's only going to be 40 percent capacity, a lot of sanitization stations. They also added a few safety measures of their own. We also have all kinds of air filtration going on um, that we've gone out and we purchased that are going to be used in the barns or air, air filtration purification systems. We have this bio -esque, you know, wipe down system. We have volunteer teams. They're going to be constantly with these boards. Say, keep your mask up, keep your distancing. You know, we, our people have embraced that. Video is set for February 11th to the 28th. If you have any questions, we have all the answers. Just head to KSAT.com. We also want to let you know that KSAT's David Sears and Ursula Perry are going to are are digging into the history of cowboys, vaqueros and ranching in South Texas and the history of the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo. The big annual event will be on February 10th at 7 p.m. You can watch this special on KSAT 12, KSAT.com and KSAT TV app. Time now is 908, 52 degrees out. We'll still ahead on GMSA at 8, celebrating black history throughout the month of February. Details on how one woman helped give teachers a new opportunity at NASA. And next, David Elder taking us inside a hot chicken sandwich food truck. We're talking about their, get this, spicy concha sandwich. Oh, it's too much. Concha sandwich, oh my gosh. Too much, oh my gosh. I'm in. Oh, yeah, not you can't. That. That, there's that fog that Sarah Spivey's been talking about. You can't see anything out through our live cam. When will it clear? She'll let us know when we come back. Everybody was doing a concha burger, so yeah. I was like, well, let's have some fun and do a concha chicken sandwich. And you've delivered. So we got uh, avocado, egg, lettuce, tomato, comeback sauce, and mayo. That's the bite. I'm super excited. Mm. Works well, right? Bro. Hey. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> wow. If you're looking for something that's off the beaten path, something you've never tried before, this concha hot chicken sandwich is definitely that item. That's weird, Thank and you. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> The sweetness from the outside really plays well with all the spice that you have going on. It kind of cuts through everything. The yolkiness from the egg kind of creates a second sauce. Um, the avocado is creamy. The fresh produce that you have on there as well. You know how to make a good sandwich, man. Thank you. This is really good. I'm gonna take another bite. This is awesome. So we have confirmed that David Elder will be in studio today, but the producers refuse to tell me what he is bringing. Interesting. The well, ultimate tease. <laughs> Quote from Max, he just texted me, yo, if he brings us this concha sandwich, I'll be the happiest person in SA. I don't know. It, it, it looks, it's just too much. That's fine. I'll have yours too. <laughs> yeah, remember last week when David Elder brought a three a patty cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. I had like a bite of it and Max was like, oh, I'll take it home and heat it up again. No, no, no. I, I don't like, think it was going to last the parking morning. lot. He I don't know if it was getting out of the studio. Yeah, I didn't. I, I saved him from that <laughs> and I didn't let him do that. All right. Uh, outside right now, this is what it looks like. Blech. Blech. Gross. <laughs> yep, we do still have uh, some areas of fog and mist being reported at the airport. It's 51 degrees, but visibility has fallen from two miles to a mile in San Antonio. We're also seeing visibility down to a quarter, three quarters of a mile rather out near Stenson down to a mile and a quarter in New Braunfels down to three quarters of a mile in Kerrville down to two and a half miles in Hondo. You know, yesterday it really was gray pretty much all day for us in San Antonio. There was some sun out across parts of the hill country. And I know that we want the sun. 
We're going to get the sun today. We just have to wait until about lunch and that's when we'll see skies clear. Two mile visibility in Uvalde, two mile visibility in Carrizo Springs and down to practically zero in Rock Springs, down to a mile and a half in Austin. Notice how in Ozona it's totally clear out there. That's where that front is right now uh, and that front is going to help to clear our skies and it's actually going to make things nice and warm in the afternoon. The reason for that is clearing skies, sunshine, going to see the thermometer rise 52 degrees in New Braunfels right now 51 in Hondo 51 in Kerrville 50 in Uvalde and 50 in Carrizo Springs. Here's the future cast. Trust the future cast. We are going to see the sun shine. This is 11 o'clock. Instantly, we're going to go from cloudy skies to sunny skies in the afternoon, and then it's going to allow for us to see a nice and pleasant afternoon uh, high temperature. 77 for the high in Del Rio, Yavaldi, Hondo, Carrizo Springs, close to 80 degrees down 35 toward Laredo. Uh, 75 along that I-35 corridor from Austin all the way here to San Antonio and 77 for the high in Pleasanton. That front is also going to make things breezy for us. Winds are going to be gusting from the northwest at about 25 miles per hour in the afternoon before winds settle down in the evening hours. So here's what you can expect today. Still cloudy at 10, still some areas of uh, mist and fog at 10, but then right at around noon, that's when we're going to see those skies clear. We'll go from 60 degrees at noon to 75 degrees in the next four hours afternoon, just because we'll be seeing uh, plenty of sunshine. Northwest winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour with gusts up to 25. Tomorrow, of course, big game going on tomorrow. Uh, for the game time after about four, it'll be nice and pleasant outside, but until then, again, it'll be sunny cold to start the day tomorrow. 39 degrees, 62 at noon, 70 for the high east winds at five to 10 miles per hour. Let's take a quick check of the satellite and radar. Notice that there are some areas of snow. There is some areas of snow out across parts of the central plains, but the big thing that everybody across the U.S. is talking about is this cold polar Arctic air that's going to be sinking across parts of the United States. It's already 12 below in Bismarck, but look at the source of this cold air. 47 below in Yellowknife in northern Canada. Very cold air mass that's going to be very dense and just spill across the U.S. The question is how far south will this Arctic air make it? Will it make it to us in San Antonio. There is some disagreement about this. One of the forecasting models has us in the 20s. The other has us in the 80s. So we have to watch this and keep a close eye on it. Uh, using uh, averaging, we've been able to come up with a good forecast here. Temperatures probably in the 40s and 50s by the end of the week. So that is quite the cool down with some drizzle and some isolated rain on Wednesday and Thursday. But until then, it'll be pretty mild. We're going to be waking up to morning clouds Monday and Tuesday with highs in the 70s because we got some uh, kinks to iron out in the forecast for the temperature forecast by the end of the week. You're going to need to keep on checking in with us. We'll have a better idea of that toward the beginning of next week, probably. Mm, 20s, 80s. <laughs> <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Oh, all right. Time now is 917, 52 degrees out. Are you craving something cold? Well, today's the day. Just ahead, a few fun facts about National Frozen Yogurt Day. Hmm. Plus, finding out where you should take your Valentine in a post COVID world. We have the details next. I'm Dr. Adina Williams Lawson, president of St. Philip's College. From Arizona to California, Dr. Lawson's career in education has taken her across the globe, especially during her time with NASA. NASA had not had a teacher in space since Krista McAuliffe. My job was to stand up the education enterprise at NASA, giving teachers an opportunity for students to nominate their teachers to become astronauts. Awards and recognition fills her office walls as she made her mark in every role. Every position I have held throughout my entire professional career, I was either the first black or the only black in that position. That is, until she came to St. Philip's College, where she spent the next 14 plus years following in the footsteps of other African American leaders. To come to St. Philip's College and then to learn about the founding president that was here for 52 years. If I could only be half as good or make half the contributions, then I count it as a success. And after being named one of the top 10 most dominant HBCU leaders in the country, you could say she's well on her way. I know that St. Philip's College and the leadership 
the employees, we're making a difference in the lives of students. And so when you can see that and experience it in real time, that's what keeps me here. Good morning and welcome back. A lot of people enjoy a night out on Valentine's Day. Others prefer to stay in, but Sarah, if you could go anywhere in the whole world, money wasn't an issue after the pandemic, where would you go? I think New York City. Okay. Yeah, and that's what we're talking about, the trip of a lifetime. Well, if you're not sure, don't worry. We have a fun quiz that will help you decide right now on KSAT.com. You can find out which romantic city you should spend Valentine's Day in. All you have to do is answer a few questions. This year, of course, might not be ideal, but mm -hmm. next year, it might be fun to add that idea to your bucket list. I just took the quiz, Max. What'd you get? And I got Vancouver. The diversity in Canada is full of adventure and not far from the bustling sea slopes of Whistler. There we go. All right, I'm going to take the quiz. And we'll then check back in. Yeah, I want to know. Look at that. Impromptu teases. <laughs> so creative. All right, 923 and 52 degrees. Coming up after the break, an oddity to becoming a grocery staple. Details and facts on today's special holiday. Welcome back. You might be thinking it's too cold outside. Why would you want a frozen drink? Because it's never too cold for ice cream or frozen yogurt. <laughs> okay. So we don't know why, but February 6th was picked as National Frozen Yogurt Day. So time to pile on the toppings. Frozen yogurt, slightly healthier option than ice cream, depending on what ice cream and what frozen yogurt you like. As long as you don't go overboard with the candies, the syrups, all the toppings, which I usually do. Fun fact, first developed in the United States in the early 1970s, but it was in the 1980s where it became so popular. So, Sarah Costa, everyone out there, make sure to celebrate National Frozen Yogurt Day. Enjoy your favorite flavor and check out a new one. So, Sarah, if you had one topping to pick, what would you pick? Um, I always go with gummy bears. Ooh, okay. Yeah. This is a judgment-free zone. I, there's no wrong answer. Okay, what's your topping? Cookie dough bites. Oh, good topping. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 927, 52 degrees out. Three seconds is all it takes for someone to know whether they find you attractive. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but is that smile they're giving you a flirty one or let's just be friends? Mm. Find out in the next half hour. Plus the challenges that players, fans, and performers are facing ahead of the big game. We have all the details next on GMSA. Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday, 931 this morning, February 6th. Sarah Costa just texted me asking me if I took Did the take Valentine's it? Day quiz no, on it's, KSAT.com. It's, it's called the Romantic mm. City Quiz on KSAT.com. I have not been able to figure out how to take it yet. I'm still working on technology. technology. Max. I know, um, I might look young, but the wrinkles are hidden very well. Sarah Spivey, what is your Romantic City? Um, I don't really understand the question. There's a quiz on KSAT.com. We, we have, oh. I'll have a responsibility to take the quiz. So we're going to take it. Everyone okay. watching, in case you were wondering, we're going to take it. We're going to check back in. Next break. Sarah Costa, what did you get? I got Vancouver. It? Okay. Said it was a bustling city. Didn't I've never know. been, so I don't know. I didn't know it was a romantic city. I didn't city. know it's That's cold awesome. there. <laughs> That's awesome. I like Austin, but I love San Antonio. I guess Texas cities, you know, they're all romantic in my eyes. All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside with visibility. Visibility is down to a mile at the airport in San Antonio, down to a mile and a quarter in New Braunfels, down to two and a half miles in Hondo, down to two and a half miles in uh, at Bernie Sage Airfield, right there on the Kendall and Bear County line. It's also cool with temperatures in the low 50s out there right now. So a great start to our day, but Today's going to end up being pretty nice. You know, we're, we're starting off with the clouds and it'll stay cloudy through about 11 a.m. But then right at about noon, we'll see our skies clear. And in the afternoon, it's going to be nice and sunny, but breezy 75 for the high northwest winds at 10 to 20 miles per hour gusts up to 25 miles per hour. So this weekend is going to be pretty mild. Uh, not a lot happening in the world of weather for this weekend, uh, which is nice because we want to be able to enjoy some time outdoors this weekend. But in the week ahead, there's a lot of questions marks regarding how cold it's going to get from some very cold Arctic air setting up to our north. I'll have a look ahead and a look at some of those impressively cold temperatures to our north in just a bit. Max. 
Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, San Antonio police trying to figure out how two men were shot, why they were shot, and who was responsible. So here's what we know. Police tell us around 2.30 this morning, the two victims showed up to downtown Baptist Hospital on Dallas Street. They both had gunshot wounds. Uh, the victims told police they drove themselves to the hospital. They claimed that they were shot somewhere off of Malone. However, police were actually unable to find the initial crime scene. Both men in stable condition, both expect to recover. Detectives now questioning them, trying to figure out what exactly happened. When the city of San Antonio has officially been named the NCAA host for the 2021 Women's Division One basketball tournament, along with Austin and San Marcos, San Antonio will be a part of a six championship round. Visit San Antonio says hosting the women's final four alone was expected to bring about $20 million in economic impact to San Antonio. That number would be expected to increase since this is happening during a pandemic. NCAA players must have seven consecutive negative tests before coming to San Antonio and they'll travel by private charter. Local business owners hope the games will bring a boost in profits. Our staff is super excited they can make some money. The Riverwalk has really been hit. It is very quiet down here. I think it's the best news we've heard in a year. Well, Mayor Ron Nirenberg also expects more than 35,000 rooms to be booked downtown. Well, through this pandemic, families, businesses, and communities are dealing with the economic fallout. So how is San Antonio doing, and what is the plan going forward when it comes to our local economy? To talk about our plan, the economic impact of the NCAA tournament that Sarah was just talking about, and a couple of new innovative initiatives, Richard Perez, the president and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce, he's going to be joining us on Leading SA tomorrow at 8 a.m., if you have any questions that you would like asked, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading Essay section of KSAT.com. Now we'll look at the excitement building for tomorrow's big game and how players, fans, and halftime show performer, The Weeknd, are all dealing with their own challenges at the Super Bowl being held during this pandemic. ABC's Will Reeve is in Tampa at a, ahead of tomorrow's action at Raymond James Stadium. With kickoff just a day away, Tampa is ready for a Super Bowl like none before. Of the 75,000 seats inside Raymond James Stadium, only 22,000 will be filled with fans and 30,000 will be filled with cutouts, part of the NFL's Fans in the Stands program. All attendees of the big game are required to wear a mask, maintain social distancing, and will be given a PPE kit. A promo video on the stadium website showing off those safety protocols as well as digital tickets and cashless food and beverage transactions. And while just one team will leave the stadium Sunday night as the winner, the NFL is declaring victory in getting to this point with postponed games, virus outbreaks, even fines for noncompliance. It's a big relief and a big, uh, you know, feeling of excitement that we've made it this far in the season. Because of COVID, the league debating last year whether there would be a season at all. What was necessary for the NFLPA to get over those ethical and moral hurdles to play a season? We did not want to be taking resources away from the general public. We didn't want to be taking testing resources away in particular. Until we were assured that we wouldn't become a a burden uh, to America, uh, that was the only time that we started thinking about what to do. And the halftime show also expected to have some twists and turns this year. The weekend teasing ahead to his big performance Sunday night, releasing this clip, showing him caught in a downpour of pigskin. The singer recently revealing his show will be influenced by past performances from icons including Prince, Michael Jackson, Beyonce, and his favorite, Diana Ross's 1996 show featuring an exit by helicopter. And grocery giant Kroger is going to give a one-time $100 payment to associates who get a coronavirus vaccine to get the payment. Employees have to get the full manufacturer recommended doses. Kroger will also give workers a $100 store credit and a thousand fuel points for hourly frontline grocery supply chain manufacturing pharmacy and call center workers associates who can't get the vaccine due to medical or religious reasons can get the payment by doing an educational health and safety course. All right, going back to the Will Reeves story on the big game for tomorrow. A lot of preparation. 
I love the halftime performance. I'm We're very be excited <laughs> about the weekend. All right, 938, 52 degrees. All right, we are talking Spurs. Big matchup tonight, but we're down three players. We're going to explain after the break. And just ahead, with Valentine's Day around the corner, we have some scientifically backed ways to find out if someone if they're into you or not. Mm. Also, I took the quiz. I figured it out. Okay. I'm going to explain after the break. Look at that tease. Ugh. The people need to know. We need to know the city, Max. <laughs> oh, well, there's not much to see from the city right now. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey for your full forecast right after the break. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to KSATDeals.com. Now, this next deal will help you to create those flawless pictures every time, and we are going to give it a try today. This home streaming studio by Aduro Ustream Lite is here to help you upgrade the quality of your photos and videos. Now, right now, we have the ring light focused on me, and I'm going to turn this one on. There you go. It's as simple as that. Turns on via remote to help you make your Zoom meetings perfect and your selfies flawless. They have three lighting options. White warm yellow and warm white so you always have the perfect light 10 levels of brightness an adjustable tripod comes with it along with the remote control and a non-slip rubber rubber grip to securely hold your phone while streaming now don't worry about batteries it is USB powered the retail price $99 the case at deals price $49.99 that is a 50% discount you can find this deal and many more case at deals.com Good morning, welcome back and happy Saturday. So get this, three seconds. That is all it takes for someone to know whether they find you attractive. But is that smile they're giving you a flirty one or just a friend smile? So much to unpack here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our Eric Hernandez has some science-backed ways to help you find out. Sometimes it can be really obvious when someone is flirting with you and whether or not it worked. How much does a polar bear weigh? Enough to break the ice. Other times, not. If you were a booger, I'd pick you first. But now there is research that looks into flirty facial expressions. Researchers from the University of Kansas took 500 photos of women with neutral, happy, and flirtatious faces and had several men interpret them. The researchers found there are four key factors to a flirty smile. A head turned to one side and tilted down slightly a slight smile, and eyes turned forward toward the implied target. Other flirty subtle signs women may show is using hand gestures a lot while talking and playing with clothing. Whether this worked... Excuse me, I think you have some pretty on your face. A little sunshine can also increase your odds. A study in France found when men asked women for their phone numbers, women were more likely to give their phone numbers on a sunny day. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Meanwhile, during that, the three of us were just, <laughs> we were smiling as creepily as possible. Hey. Big question, though. <laughs> Has anyone ever tried, like, a corny pickup line with you guys? Oh, oh Max, yeah. come on. Of I course. want to hear the corniest one. I don't even remember them. They're Did it hurt? Okay. Oh, gosh. When okay. you fell from heaven? You need, I hope you don't use those, Max. <laughs> okay, get off of the screen. We're going to talk about weather now. All right. We are looking at a clearing skies out near Rock Springs and Kerrville as we speak. Uh, skies are starting to clear out there. So, yeah, there's an end in sight to this cloudy start here in San Antonio. Clear skies out near Rock Springs, starting to see some clearing in Kerrville and in Fredericksburg. It's going to be just over the next couple of hours here that we'll start to see skies clear in San Antonio. But look at the time lapse from this morning. Watch how fog is completely enveloped this entire frame. Visibility is down to a mile in San Antonio. Now it's back up to four miles. So we are seeing some improvement there as we're starting to see the clearing line get closer. Visibility down to three miles at Bernie Stage Airfield, down to a mile and a half in Castroville, down to a mile and a half in New Braunfels. A wider view here, we're seeing improvement across parts of the hill country as that front moves through. Not a huge temperature drop with that front. In fact, because we're going to see sunshine in the afternoon, we'll actually be warmer than we were yesterday. A high temperature today in the mid 70s. But everybody in the nation is paying very close attention to this polar Arctic air to our north. 12 below in Bismarck. But look at these temperatures. 47 below in Yellowknife in Canada. 45 below at Stony Rapids. In northern Canada, this is some very cold polar Arctic air. It's dense. It's going to spill 
across the United States and it, it's going to bring very cold weather to parts of the northern tier of the United States. We're talking six below in Omaha by Tuesday. Now the question for us here in San Antonio is how far south will this Arctic air go? There is some disagreement in the forecasting models, a big disagreement in fact on how cold it will get here. If, if it'll get cold at all in San Antonio, but I do think that we will see a temperature drop in San Antonio. Now it might not be a huge temperature drop, but we are going to look at temperatures going down into for highs into the 40s and 50s by the end of this week. And so that's a pretty big drop from today in the start of the week by nearly 20 to 30 degrees. As far as rain goes, it's not looking good for rainfall, really only some uh, potentially some drizzle and some light rain on Thursday. Uh, but here in San Antonio, we're going to salvage a nice weekend. We'll be looking at that front moving through clearing skies by lunch and then in the afternoon today, 75 degrees for the high winds will calm down after a breezy uh, afternoon and by the start of the day tomorrow we will be in the upper 30s. So a cold start to our Sunday and in the afternoon tomorrow, sunny skies and 70 degrees to round out the weekend. So today is going to end up being a beautiful day after this gray start we will only be at 60 degrees at noon, but very quickly we'll see temperatures shoot up by about 15 degrees in the afternoon and then we'll be looking at a uh, chilly evening winds will be breezy too we're going to see winds turn to the northwest gusting up to 25 miles per hour this afternoon you'll notice when the front moves through because of the clearing skies and the gusty conditions now looking ahead to next week morning clouds monday and tuesday but then pretty mild afternoons and here's what we've got for our forecast so far for the end of the week temperatures dropping down into the 40s and into the 50s by the end of the week with drizzle on Wednesday, isolated rain on Thursday. Just going to be kind of a gray and damp close to the week with, uh, again, the potential for some very cold air to move into place. Those numbers at the end of the week are by, by far not the final numbers we'll have on the forecast. You're going to want to continue to check in with us as we get a little clarity on those temperatures by the end of the week. Thank you, Sarah. Max, you gave us your awful pickup line earlier. Can you give us your flirty face that the story was talking about? Okay, I don't have the flirt. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Are you waking or having a seizure? I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> Big news, though. David Elder just entered the building. He still won't tell me what he is bringing for food, but I can tell you we're going to be talking Spurs right after the break. Welcome back. The private equity firm known as CVC Capital Partners based in Luxembourg. They're looking to buy 15% ownership in the Spurs. That doesn't include any of the majority shares held by the Holt family. So all this comes after the Financial Times reported that last April, a minority stake in the team was up for sale. At that time, Peter J. Holt, the chairman of Spurs Sports and Entertainment, vowed that the ownership group is 100% committed to the Spurs. So don't worry. Spurs are saying in San Antonio, and here's a fun fact. According to Sportico, the Spurs now worth more than $2 billion. All right, we talked about the team. Now to talk about the play. Silver and Black, they are in Houston tonight. They're going to be taking on the Rockets, but they're going to be without three key players. Lamarcus Aldridge, he is out with right hip soreness. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, he is out with a stomach illness. And DeJounte Murray, questionable because of soreness in his left ankle. The Spurs coming off that big fourth quarter comeback in Minnesota, taking on Minnesota. Now a one game road trip before hosting Golden State Warriors. Those will be back to back games Monday, Tuesday. Then they have their annual rodeo road trip. Also the first time the Spurs facing the Rockets since splitting a pair of games in San Antonio back on January 14th and 16th. Again, that game in Houston tonight, Toyota Center, tip off seven o'clock. Pro football coming. Yeah, we can talk about Spurs all day, all weekend, but we all know what this weekend is. Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Super Bowl 55 tomorrow, 5.30 p.m. in Tampa Bay, Raymond James Stadium. Sarah Costa, who you got? Um, I'm going to go for Tom Brady just because I like both. But I don't know. I just want to see him one, win one more. I don't know. That's fair. Well, this is football. There are no ties. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right. It is 9.53 and 53 degrees. We'll be right back. But before we do, do you think you are well informed when it comes to football? Great question. Tomorrow on GMSA, we put our knowledge to the test.
In your news you need to know before you go, a woman was rescued by the jaws of life this morning. It happened just after 5.30 this morning on Highway 281 and Warsbach Parkway. Police say the 40-year-old woman was driving northbound of 281 when she saw an object in the middle of the road, tried to avoid it, and her car spun out of control. She was taken to University Hospital with minor injuries. Officers on scene tell us they are ruling it an accident. We just got the pollen count in. It's not great news. Mountain cedar is high and mold is actually up from yesterday as well. Mold is moderate. Ash and elm are low today. Now you can see that skies are already clearing. Kerrville, Lakey, Rock Springs and Del Rio. So although we're cloudy right now, we are going to see the sun in the afternoon. 40, uh, 75 degrees rather for the high temperature and it'll be breezy with gusts up to 25 miles per hour. All in all, a beautiful day today and tomorrow for the big game. Morning clouds Monday and Tuesday and quite a bit cooler toward the end of the week. We'll be able to solidify those temperatures as we get closer to the end of the week, but there is a little uncertainty there. So continue to check back in with us. All right, so we want to give you a little sneak peek of this week's episode of Texas Eats. We have our own David Elder joining us in studio right now with all the details. Okay, so you've been keeping this a secret. I even asked the producers before the show. And they said nothing. They said, we're not going to tell you. David specifically I said. I said, don't tell Max. That's what I said. <laughs> Go okay, for it. it. Let's see. Are you ready? Ah! Oh, my goodness. Big game food. Oh, That's how we do it. Go. Look at that. 50 wings. Wing. Challenge accepted. What's everyone else going to eat? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got the 25 wet, 25 dry. You got the habanero ranch on one side, mild buffalo. This is from Anchor Bar. This is from the home of the buffalo wing. Okay. This one was invented, right, in Buffalo, New York. So this is the real deal. What flavors we got? So I just, I just. So you I, said yeah. dry and wet. You said no. Dry habanero wet. ranch and mild oh, buffalo. Oh, I was. My mouth is watering. I can't <laughs> concentrate. I, I'm used to. It. I'm used to <laughs> shootings and real upset things. This is like my. <laughs> My mind is so focused. Yeah, this is on the Saturday mornings. This is your little beacon of happiness right uh, here. It really in. is. Now, this is not on the show this weekend, but it is big game weekend. Of course. So I had to bring it in. wanted to uh, show it off. But real quick, when you watch the show this weekend, what's really cool, on the website, ksat.com slash Texas Eats, there's a map on there now mm -hmm. oh. where you can go on there, and it shows you all the restaurants that were featured on today's show and how to get there and a quick little bio about each one, a little bit of information. So if you head to the website, you want to know where to go, that's how you do it. So we've been asking people throughout the morning. We know Sarah Spivey, Chiefs. Yeah, Chiefs. Woo! Sarah Costa likes Tom Brady for some reason. We can't figure out why. I, I like Tom Brady. <laughs> you're, so you're going for the Chiefs. One more time. Who are you going with? I'm going with the Bucks, man. No. Why? Because I want Brady to get one more. Yes. Okay. I want him to ride off into the sunset. I'm, I'm a Brady fan, man. I'm a Brady fan. That's fair. I, I like Mahomes. Mm -hmm. He's a good cat. He's going to be mm -hmm. here for a long time. Yeah. He's, he can win another one. He can win, <laughs> he can win another one. <laughs> I want Brady to ride off. I All want right. him to do it. And he's got a good squad. Yeah, he does. All right, so we got about 40 seconds. Yeah. What should we expect in the show today? All right, we got brunch items, great stories at a cafe here in San Antonio, plus hot chicken sandwiches. Lots of hot chicken sandwiches. <laughs> can you ever have too many? I don't think so. Sandwiches? And then a Mexican comfort food hot dog mm. that's just loaded up. Carne asada, onions. It's it, it's like a bacon wrap hot dog. It's over the top. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's you, nice. you you would enjoy it. You would enjoy it's it. It's dressed up, right? <laughs> it's Wearing a tuxedo. Up. We have seven <laughs> seconds. You want to throw it to your own show so I can there eat the There you go. Uh, so don't eat all these right now, okay? Mm. But right, Texas Eats, new episode starts.